Hmm. I think I'm going to wear sandals with my socks today. As humans, we've been gifted with the ability to critically think. With this ability, we've overcome a lot of obstacles, dilemmas, and toils that life throws at us. Sometimes, however, there are questions so specific and unique that we can't find a direct answer to it. Whether it be because the solutions contradict each other, or just because there's no real good answer. Without further ado, these are 10 mind-blowing paradoxes. Number 10 is the crocodile paradox. A crocodile has captured a little boy. With the croc being an extremely reasonable one, it promises the father that it will release the little boy only if he can predict what it will do next. The father then thinks for a moment and states, you will not give my son back. This then troubles the croc. You see, if the father is correct in the statement, the croc then keeps the kid. But if the croc keeps the kid, then he's no longer keeping his promise. However, once the little boy's returned, then the father's prediction is no longer correct. So what should the crocodile do? Number nine is thesis ship paradox. You see, in ancient Greece, there was a legendary king named Theseus, who was supposedly responsible for finding Athens. Since he was well known for fighting many navy battles, the people of Athens dedicated a memorial in his honor by having a ship permanently parked at the port. This was known as the Ship of Theseus. And as time went on, some of the planks started to rot away. In order to keep the ship in pristine condition, the rotting planks would then be swapped out for the new planks of the same material. So, with this being said, if you replace one plank from the ship, is it still the same ship of Theseus? And if this is the case, then at what plank makes it different? Number 8 is for all you Star Trek fans out there. We have finally reached the distant future, and the teleportation technology has been perfected for use by humans for traveling. You see, this is achieved by scanning your body and capturing every bit of information down to the last particle. It then sends that information in an instant rather than sending you. Once this is done, your body gets destroyed while the information of those atoms get transferred to the new destination. The machine will then synthesize an exact replica of you using new atoms. You then wake up in a new galaxy with all of your memories before the teleportation ever happened. And naturally, you're convinced that you survived the procedure. Now, of course the atoms are all new, but isn't the new body still the same you? Or do you cease to exist? Let me know in the comments below. Number seven is known as the liar's paradox. Are you calling me a liar? I ain't calling you a truther. There have been many versions of this paradox. One form of this originated back from 600 BC, where Creedon said, all Creedons are liars. Since said Creedon said all Creedons were liars, would that mean that he was lying? Or was he telling the truth about all Creedons being liars, thus making an endless circle? So you gotta ask yourself, in this case, is the liar telling the truth or is the truther telling a lie? Number six is the barber paradox. This paradox was originally thought of by Bertrand Russell in the early 1900s. You see, there was a barber that worked in a town and in this town, there was a weird law that every resident had to be cleanly shaved. Another interesting fact about this town is that nobody shaved themselves. So, if the barber shaves everybody else, then who shaves the barber? Number five is the irresistible force paradox. Okay, Star Wars fans, don't get too excited. Unfortunately, this isn't that kind of force. This paradox originated all the way back to the third century in a philosophical book by author Han Feezy. The story goes, a man was attempting to sell a spear and a shield. Soon, an intrigued buyer decided to ask how good the spear was. The gentleman selling the items simply stated that the spear could pierce any shield. The buyer then asked how well the shield worked, to which the seller commented it could defend against all spear attacks. Instantly, the buyer followed this response, asking what would happen if they struck each other. My guess is that the sound waves would send out and feel the atmosphere, then summoning sharks and bears to come together to be one of the most dangerous forces to be reckoned with. But hey, what do I know? 
Number four is the chicken and the egg paradox. Mmm, chicken. So, which one did come first? I mean, technically, if we're talking about eggs in general, they would be first. As there have been documented ones far before chickens were even a thing. Another interesting thought that helps support the egg theory as well is that if there was an evolutionary variation of a chicken that wasn't technically a chicken, which then laid an egg, which then hashed into a chicken, that would technically be considered a chicken egg, right? Or, on the other hand, maybe there's an aisle somewhere full of chickens that are everlasting and are planning on taking over the world. Nah, probably not. Number three is the grandfather paradox. The grandfather paradox starts with a young individual who has access to time travel. They then use this ability to travel back in time before the conception of their mother or father and then kill their grandfather. What are you doing to me, Sonny? My, don't worry about it, grandfather. Which in turn would prevent the time traveler's existence, right? As it would have caused a loop, meaning he wouldn't have existed. Number two is the Pinocchio paradox. We're all familiar with the movie Pinocchio, right? Quick recap. There's a puppet that comes to life, and anytime he tells a lie, his nose grows. So I guess you could say he has a big nose. <laughs> Not like anybody else we know. <laughs> <laughs> so, with this being said, if Pinocchio says that his nose will grow, then what will happen? If Pinocchio is in fact lying, then his nose will grow. But in turn, that would then mean that he was telling the truth. And if it doesn't grow, then he would be telling a lie, which in turn would make his nose grow. Either way, sounds like a good way to get firewood to me. And number one is the hillbilly paradox. Yeah, you really know I love these mullets partying back and business up front. <laughs> this paradox is for all y'all people out there who really enjoy mullets. It goes as follows. If a mullet prevents rednecks, then why do rednecks love mullets so dang much? It really makes you wonder, who came up with this idea? Who thought of it? And why do I really want to watch Joe Dirt now? Hey, thanks again for watching my video, guys. Please feel free to like and subscribe so you don't miss what's next. Check in every Wednesday for my latest video. And click that little bell notification just so you don't miss any updates. Until next time, I'm going to call on this case closed.